This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The Army Painter have finally updated their range of basic acrylic paints, and like everyone else, I've got some thoughts. But instead of trying to judge an entire paint line in this one video, I have decided to specifically focus on what I think is the most interesting part of this paint set for the beginner or average painter. That's right, it's the $40 starter set. But before we go any further, I first want to disclose that this paint starter set, as well as this 50 paint mega set, and a bottle of pale sand were provided to me free of charge for review purposes by the Army Painter. They did not pay me to make this review, but it is worth noting that I have been paid by the Army Painter in the past as a consultant on one of their previous paint lines back in 2022. Currently, I have a friendly relationship with the Army Painter, so there may be a little bit of bias in this video, but I think you'll find I have my criticisms of this paint line as well. If you've been around in this hobby for a while, you know just how hard it is for a beginner to get started miniature painting. You not only have to buy the miniatures themselves, but also a nice variety of paints. Not to mention all of the other accessories you need, such as primer, brushes, glue, basing materials, and pretty much forever, I have wished for a nice starter product right around that sweet spot of under $50 USD that I could confidently recommend to beginner painters as an actual good value starting point on their painting journey. A lot of other starter paint sets come close, but I feel like each one is missing at least one essential ingredient that I would want from a painting starter set if I was gifting this to a brand new painter. Whether it lacks a basic primer, a basic brush, or a few metallics, I feel like most starter sets are missing at least one thing that I would consider essential for someone just starting out. So let's take a look inside the brand new Army Painter Fanatic starter set and see how it stacks up against the competition. Upon opening the box, we are greeted with a sheet of stickers, always welcome, a painting guide, and finally the actual contents of the box. We have a test miniature, seven basic paint colors, two metallic paints, a bottle of strong tone wash, some brush on primer, as well as a starter paintbrush. And intentional or not, they also include what I would consider to be a pretty good starter painting palette in the form of this plastic insert. In my opinion, this is pretty much everything you would need to get started painting your miniatures right away. With the exception of basic assembly tools and glue, that sort of thing, which will vary depending on what kind of miniature you're assembling. But aside from that, if you are a beginner opening this kit, all you would really need to supply is a jar full of water for washing your brush and a paper towel for cleaning your brush and wiping off excess paints. Let's try out the brush on primer to see if it's any good. I was a bit skeptical of this primer at first as I tend to prefer a darker black or brighter white brush on primer, but this light gray one actually surprised me. It's just a shade lighter and a shade warmer than the standard gray GW plastic, so it's easy to see where you've already painted. It's also a lot drier and less thin than the brush on primers that I'm used to, making it easy to apply using the principles of Howl Corp's patented Wilmoth method. And if you've never heard of this revolutionary painting method, check out the link in the description. But basically what I like to do with brush on primers is apply it more like a heavy dry brush, avoiding putting any primer into the deep recesses and just focusing on getting a nice coat of it over all of the flat surfaces, not worrying about getting paint into the deep crevices to help preserve those details for later. And overall, while it is possible to apply primer using this tiny brush, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. And I would say it's probably in your best interest if you pick up this starter set to also pick up a nice cheap dollar store brush for a dollar to make your priming go a little bit faster and to help preserve the tip on your nice new starter brush. Overall, I felt this primer performed pretty well. Only a single coat was needed and most importantly, 
This is one of the few starter paint sets that I've seen so far that actually contains a primer, which is kind of a huge deal for accessibility in my opinion, as even basic spray primers up here in Canada have only gotten more and more expensive over the past few years. And if you've been watching my last few videos, you'll already know I've become quite a huge advocate of starting with brush on primer for accessibility reasons. Strong tone. Army painter washes are well known in the community for being pretty decent. But to be honest, personally, I've never really tested them all that much. So let's try out our strong tone on top of our primed model to see the results. Once again, you will see that I am using the makeshift palette for this, but I'm using the crevices of the plastic for this to help contain our more non-viscous wash type paint. Once we've got this paint on our brush, I'm just going to slather it all over the model and see what happens. Once again, this part of the painting process would probably be easier with a larger, cheaper brush from the dollar store, but it is possible to use the brush included if you really wanted to prove something to your viewers or yourself, I mean. I'm just using this starter brush here to prove it is possible to paint a nice miniature using just this starter set. And after the wash dries on our miniature, I'm actually pretty impressed with the results. It dries to a nice dark brown color and sinks into the recesses pretty well, setting us up with a nice starting point and some built-in shading for painting our miniature like we would a coloring book. So the wash is good, the primer's pretty good, let's move on to the actual paints. Red. And the red paint included looks pretty good. It's a pretty nice primary red, slightly on the cooler side of reds, and this paint is pretty thick right out of the bottle, but it can quite easily be thinned down with a little bit of water on our palette. Coverage wise, I found that this red is actually quite good and you can get quite a nice red with just a single coat, which is a huge upgrade from the previous War Paints line from the Army Painter. I also wanted to highlight the bottle itself at this point, as you can see down in the corner that this specific red is part of the Cool Red Flexible Triad system, which is one of the interesting parts of this paint line. Quite simply, it seems like all of the paints in this paint line have been categorized into six paint sets from dark to light, making it much easier for a beginner to know which colors will work best as highlights or shadows for a given color. But do you know which other system is really intuitive and easy to use? That's right, it's this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I have been using for just a little bit over a decade now for all of my website needs. And it's extremely easy to use. You just pick from one of their gorgeously pre-made templates, add in any extra features or plug and play assets you might want to include, and then customize things to your heart's content using their extremely intuitive drag and drop grid system. No coding or technical knowledge required. I've been using my current Squarespace website over at howlcorp.com to house a gallery of my painted miniatures, all of my painting reference documents, as well as an online store where I can sell anything I might like. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. Yellow. The yellow paint included in this box is also very nice and has a similar consistency to the red. It's nice to see a really nice, strong, vibrant yellow in this core set, as yellow is one of those hit and miss colors that tends to be quite hard to make as a paint. And with that said, I think they did a pretty commendable job here. It doesn't cover quite as well as the red, but that's true of any yellow in any paint line in my experience. And after one or two coats, I found it's pretty easy to get a nice solid coat of this yellow color. So far, so good. And with both of these colors on our palette, let's mix them together to see if we can get a decent looking orange. And honestly, not bad. In my experience, most reds and yellows when you mix them together 
won't give you a very good orange. And honestly, most times you're going to want to mix a magenta and a yellow together. Make sure to check out my CMYK video down in the description for why that is. But with that said, this orange is actually not too bad, and I could see it working well as a shade for the yellow in this set or a highlight for the red. Next up, green. Once again, pretty nice primary green color. It once again has good coverage, and I'm finding that overall the consistency in terms of thickness between these paints is pretty even. This is a green paint I could definitely see myself using. Blue. The ultramarine blue in this set is pretty good for what I think it's intended for, but personally I would have preferred a slightly more saturated primary blue for this starter set. Perhaps something like the crystal blue in the 50 paint set, but I do admit it does make sense to include an ultramarine blue in this starter set, given how popular a certain army is in the world's most popular miniatures game. Fair enough, I still prefer the crystal blue. Brown. The brown in this set is actually pretty versatile and I would almost call it more of a tan or dark khaki color. It can easily be lightened with white, darkened with black, or combined with the reds and yellows in this set to get a variety of colors for both skin tones and any other sort of brown or tan color you might need. Black. The black paint is good. It's a black paint. I like how dark it is. White. Much like yellow, white can often be one of the most difficult colors to get right in a paint line. And personally, I think Army Painter have done a really commendable job here. The coverage on this white is quite good. It also thins down quite well. Pretty good. Pretty good white, no notes. Metallics. As I've said in previous videos, I'm not really a power user of most metallic paints, as I tend to prefer non-metallic metals for most of my standard paint jobs. But for larger armies, I do like to dabble with true metallic metals, and these ones from what I can tell seem pretty good. My standard metallic go-to has always been Viejo metal color, but I'm actually quite impressed with these metallics, especially compared to the average metallic in most paint lines. They're thick enough to dry brush with, but you can also thin them down for more smooth applications. I could definitely see myself using these metallics in the near future on my Bretonian army. And speaking of Bretonia, I think this paint set could actually be a pretty good starter set if you're painting the old world and you want that retro look, as pretty much all the colors you would expect in that retro palette are represented here. Overall conclusions. For beginners, I have to say, I think this paint set is actually a real bargain at just $40. If you have someone in your life who wants to get into mini painting, but doesn't know quite where to start, what to buy first, I think this inexpensive box could be a really good starting point. However, there are two downsides to this set, which I would like to address. Downside number one, thickness and drying time. Like I said earlier, I am more used to Pro Acryl, which is a thinner paint with a much longer working time. So much so that I actually stopped using a wet palette over the past six months, as I find I actually prefer to use Pro Acryl paints on a dry palette as they're already so thin. With that said, this downside of these paints being a little bit thick and drying a little bit fast is really only a bad thing for absolute beginners, as I found these paints really work best with a wet palette. Once I started using a wet palette with these paints, they really came to life for me. And I had little to no trouble keeping them wet, blendable, and with a bit of a longer working time. However, this is worth noting if you want to gift this set to the beginner painter in your life, as you will probably want to buy them a wet palette to go with this set or show them how to build one of their very own. Check out the link down in the description for a video where I show you how to quickly and easily build your own wet palette. Downside number two, saturation. This is less of a problem for beginner painters and more of a personal preference thing. I had been having quite a bit of fun with these paints and really enjoying using them until I realized that the vibrant colors on my palette weren't always translating to my models. 
I felt like there was something off with these paints, especially with the reds and yellows. And once I tried these alongside the red and yellow from the Pro Acryl base set, I saw exactly what the problem was saturation. Now don't get me wrong, I have been really enjoying using these paints. I think they're great for beginners and advanced users, but for my painting style specifically, I tend to want access at all times to the brightest, most saturated form of each color, and then I can blend with it if I want to make it less saturated, but there's not really a way to make a color more saturated unless you want to do some glazing with fluorescence. And the saturation of the red and yellow in this paint line is just not quite saturated enough that I can justify using these two paints over the red and yellow from my basic Pro Acryl starter set. There do seem to be other paints in this paint line that have some really great saturation, but at least from what Army Painter sent me, I can't really justify using their red or their yellow over ones I already own. So I would say so far, that's the main downside of this paint line for me, but there are a lot of upsides as well, as there are a lot of circumstances where raw saturation isn't my top priority. If I'm looking for great coverage in a single coat or a quicker drying time, I'd very well see myself reaching for this paint line over Pro Acryl. And again, this is only a review of the basic starter set of these paints. I have not tested out all 200 colors. I only have access to 50 colors from this paint line, and I've only tested out about half of them at this point. It's entirely possible that there are more saturated reds and yellows in the 200 paint range, and I would be happy to discover that if it was the case. Overall, I do really like these paints, and I think this starter set is an absolute bargain. These are a huge improvement over the old Army Painter War paints, and a huge improvement over their old starter sets. So if you're a beginner and you don't have any other hobby supplies, or if you have a beginner painter in your life that you would like to help get started, I think this could be a really great starting point. Personally, I'm considering buying two or three of these to keep in stock at all times just to gift to people who want to get started painting. So yeah, I will continue to test out these paints over the rest of 2024 and make sure to come back and give you my thoughts if I discover anything new or if I have anything new to say about this paint line. If you'd like to check out another great review of this starter set, make sure to go and check out Brent's review over at Goober Town Hobbies. He's got a lot of really great examples of what these paints look like on a variety of models. But that is it for today. If you'd like to see these videos ad-free, see your name up in the credits scrolling by right now, or gain access to our extremely inclusive, exclusive Discord server, you can do so over at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. And with that said, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.